What's up boys, we're going to be replacing two slack adjusters today. If I got one bad part on one side of the axle, I'm going to do the other side. And I knew this thing was bad because my brake drum was getting rusty. That meant something wasn't adjusting the way it should be. And I knew that my brake chamber was good, I knew all my linkage was good, S-cam, all that was good. So I narrowed it down to the slack adjuster. So I figured out it was bad just by doing this, what you're seeing right here, just turning it, releasing the brakes. But normally to do this, you have to pull out on that pressure relief cap, that paw back there. I didn't have to on this one, so something inside of it was broke, which was causing the brakes to not press against the drums as they should. It was all out of, out of whack, so I figured going to replace this one, might as well do the other one. If you go clockwise like I was just doing, you shouldn't be able to go that direction unless you pull out on that paw. I'll demonstrate right here. And then this is the way you would go to engage the brakes. It's like a ratcheting system. For every click you hear, you won't be able to go back the other way. And then I have to take off the clevis because it has to screw onto the rod onto the brake chamber. And it's pretty simple. You just remove the cotter pins and then the, the pins themselves just drop down. It was nice that they included these with the slack adjusters, but these are not included when you buy the brake chamber unless they're welded on, obviously. And I went ahead and compared the new clevis to the old one just to be sure, but this is a pretty standard size. Make sure the holes line up. So I went ahead and caged the chamber while I was working on it so the rod would be fully retracted. That way I didn't have to start up the truck and release the brakes and leave the truck running. It's just much easier to do this way, a lot safer too. And you just pull out the caging bolt, which is what you're seeing right here, or the caging bolt, as I said in another video. And you just insert it into this slot that I'm showing you right here and you, you turn it. As soon as you put it in there, you turn it to the right 90 degrees and it locks in place and you can pull on it and it won't come out. Once you have it locked in, you just put the washer over it and then you screw the nut onto it. And then what's really awesome is I have these special caging socket, whatever you want to call it, um, that I use to tighten it down. This thing is really cool. Now we're going to pull out the cotter pins and the pins themselves from the slack adjuster in the brake chamber clevis. Vice grips and needle nose pliers and a hammer is your best friend when getting these bad boys off. Um, and I always use anti-seize whenever I put new ones in. And if it's been a while, you might just smear some down in there. Uh, man, it'll save you a lot of headache on down the line and it takes no time at all to do and there's how the pins looked and they came out pretty easily really especially for how long it's been since those were put in so now that the slack adjuster is free from the clevis we can go ahead and pull it off of the s cam and the first thing you gotta do before you do that is clean it up because there is an external retaining ring buried in there otherwise known as a snap ring and of course you gotta pull that out with some snap ring pliers and there it is and this is probably the original slack adjuster so that's 18 years and I went ahead and sprayed some penetrating lithium grease in there and hopefully that kind of frees it up a little bit, cleans it up too. And then after that I just got an old kitchen rag out and cleaned her up and then I got my snap ring pliers and of course they didn't work because these are crappy snap ring pliers. So what I ended up having to do was use my uh my wood chisel and i know what people are gonna say in the comments a wood chisel is for chiseling wood my wood chisel is shot so i'm gonna use it to hammer around this snap ring and free it up a little ain't nothing wrong with that so my snap ring pliers just wouldn't go wide enough to uh, pull this thing off the shaft so we had to bring in the wood chisel boys I had to bring in the backup and uh, just kind of pry it up at the same time and we we worked it out we worked it out it was a uh, it was a process maybe one day i'll buy some real snap ring pliers uh, probably not and in my case i had to reuse this snap ring because the slack adjuster that i bought from fleet pride did not include it with it it was the in-house brand so now i gotta get the slack adjuster out of the clevis and to do that you just turn the brake adjustment screw minus square it's on the top of the slack adjuster you just turn that clockwise and like you're seeing right here it'll it'll come out of there and then you can knock it out of that s cam 
This slack adjuster I found out you can't just pry it off with a pry bar so this method is what worked best for me it was just to kind of pry on it hit it with the hammer from both sides and then it just came right off and I forgot to mention earlier there's also a washer behind that snap ring then once you pull the slack adjuster off there'll be this rubber piece on the shaft you pull it off and if it's not on the shaft it's probably on the slack adjuster and then once you pull it off you'll have a shim behind it and you want to pull it off too and then i just grab my old rag again and just kind of wipe some of the filth off of this thing and here's a side by side comparison of the new one compared to the old one and like i said earlier the new one is an in-house brand from fleet pride so it is way cheaper than the name brand stuff like halodex and what's funny is at least according to the guy that worked at fleet pride he said it's the same manufacturer that produces both of these so the only difference i could see was the pullout tab was slightly different and there was no instructions included with this one. Usually the name brand stuff has instructions, but that's no big deal to me. Now I'm just putting some anti-seize on the S-cam shaft, and I put a really good dosage of this stuff on there. I, you know, I want this thing to be easy to pull off next time I do have to take it off. Who knows how many years from now. Now it's time to put the new slack adjuster on and I could not figure out why this thing wouldn't go on here and you can hear my frustration right here. What the hell? I don't understand this. Let me put this on there first. Dummy. Yeah, I almost forgot to put that metal shim back on there and the rubber piece as well. And you know that rubber piece I was thinking I could just put it on the slack adjuster and then slide it on there. But I figured... You know, I better put it back on there the way it came off. So what ultimately ended up working for me was to tap that S-cam shaft just back a little bit because it does move back and forth. And then the uh, slack adjuster just will slide right over it. And then go ahead and put that washer on. And now the fun part, trying to get this snap ring in there. I had to work and work at this thing, trying to get it to go into the recessed area of the shaft. And I just had to kind of beat on it with the hammer a little at a time and just keep on trying to hit it a little farther and farther on that shaft until i could finally see the clip fall into that groove worst case scenario i would have had to take the wheels and the drum off and then kind of push on the s cam from the other side and now the fun part and i'm not being sarcastic this is actually kind of enjoyable now you just turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise on the top and get it till it's about lined up with that clevis. And of course for the pins, I use a crap ton of anti-seize. And there was a lot that led up to this, but I finally got the pin in there. And look, my uh, wood chisel came in handy again. Uh, it was the other end of it this time though. And of course you want to use anti-seize on the small pin. See that little piece how it's a little too long well you can just pull out on the tab like you see i'm doing right here and then you can push up on it where it needs to be and let off on the tab and then you can stick your pin in there you'd be good to go and uh use my wood chisel again beat it in there and to get the cotter pins back in i just get my vice grips and i'll hold one end of that pin from turning and then i can use my needle nose pliers and splay out on the cotter pins on the other side without the pin turning on me while I do it. Now I'm going to go ahead and adjust my brakes and I'm just going to turn that adjusting screw on the top of the slack adjuster clockwise till I can't turn it anymore. And then I just pry out on that little tab and then I go back a half of a turn on the adjusting screw. And then I gotta uncage the chamber, just get out this long socket, unscrew that nut, pull off the washer, pull out the caging bolt, and then put the little rubber tab back on there and go ahead and put the bolt back in its pouch because you never know when you're gonna need to reuse that caging bolt. And I went ahead and changed this 90 degree grease zerk out to a straight one just to make it a little more accessible and it took entirely way too long. So now I'm just checking for the push rod travel and I do it between 105 and 135 PSI and for a type 30 brake chamber no more than two inches is allowed. Now I'm just doing the final checks and I have my wife assist me with this one. Okay, uh, push it in or pull it out, whichever one. 
the yellow. Uh, pull it out. Okay, can you press on the brake? Okay, let off. Uh, push in the knob. Okay, now push on the brake. Okay, that should be good. That's it? Yeah. <laughs>